Welcome back, everybody, to Roll Again. I am DM Steve, and we're here for Session Zero with one of the players in the upcoming Haunted Heroes uh, summer campaign. And so uh, Caleb is here with us, and he's going to be playing uh, his new character, Rowan Ward. And so I'm going to turn it over to him first to tell us a little bit about his character. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Caleb Rafferty, like he said. Um, my character is a, he used to be human, but went through a procedure, turned himself into a skirt, Azamar. He worked with a secret order, uh, kind of like the FBI of magic, in a way. Um, yeah, he investigates strange supernatural crime, protect the law of magic, being an arcane cleric. But his real goal is to find his wife, who was kidnapped by the Illuminati. Yeah, he's a bit like he only uses he only uses um the he only part of the order to use the resources, not really caring about the not really caring about the the actual job. But if he's ordered to do something by the order, um, he will go out and do it. Okay, um, that pretty much it. Awesome. Yep. All right. Well, then we're gonna the first thing we're gonna do is roll for your ability scores and see how how we come up. So uh, you've got 4d6 there. Uh, why don't you give us the first roll? All right. Okay. Um, I got I got two sixes, yep. four yeah. and a one. All right. So we dropped the one. So that's a four or that's a uh, 16, which is a great roll. First off, uh, give me another one. Okay. Four, six, five, and one. All right, we'll drop the one again. So 15, another solid roll. Uh, go ahead with our third. Okay, um, five, three, one, and three. All right, we'll drop the one again. Uh, six, that's 11. Another, that's still a pretty solid roll. All right. Uh, give us the fourth one. Okay. Uh, four, four, six, and one. Drop the ones again. And that gives us a 14. Awesome. All right. We got two more rolls to go. Two more rolls. Okay. Okay. Three, three, five, five. All right, we'll drop one of the threes and that gives us a 13, awesome. And give me your last roll. <laughs> okay, two, 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 and three. All right, so that gives us a seven, which is a low, but we've got modifiers and stuff too. So, you, you know, you, you, rolled super, you rolled super high to start and then pretty, pretty solid all the way through. So there's always one that kind of jumps out and gets you, but that's all right. Um, all right, so I am gonna share my screen um, and so that you can see the, the character sheet as well. Um, and then we can, you can kind of tell me where you want them. All right, you see it pop up? Yes, I do see it. Okay. All right, cool. So you're a cleric, um, specifically an arcane domain cleric. So uh, you already get you already get a plus one to wisdom and a plus two to charisma with no matter what you put there. So they're already there just to remind me what to add them in automatically when we put them there. Um, as a cleric, normally you're you want to focus on wisdom as your really strong one because it's your spell casting ability, and then either strength or con is usually your your second highest right. so uh the, the the highest what you've got for your roles right now is uh 16 15 14 13 11 7 so we'll start with the 16 where would you like that the 16 put that with my wisdom all right so you've got a plus one in there anyway so that is going to give you a 17 all which right. is a great wisdom score to start with um your second one was a 15 where do you want to put that I'm gonna put my 15 to. Is can mace be? Uh, uh, can I use my my dexterity for my mace? Um, your mace is gonna be strength. Dex is for range weapons. Okay. But your mace is a, a, a up close weapon, so that's strength normally. Okay, I'm gonna put that 15 to my constitution. To your constitution, okay. Yeah. 
All right. Um, we got a f now, next I have on my list an 11. Where would you like the 11? The 11. I will put the 11 for my intelligent. Okay. Next is a 14. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put the 14 for my uh, strength. Awesome. And then we have a 13. 13. I'm gonna put that 13 for my charisma. Okay. And they have a plus two there as well, so that's a 15. Um, yep, and then no. that leaves you with your seven in your decks. Okay. Whoo, he's slow. Okay. <laughs> um, the other option you had was, and I, you can stick with this or, or change it, is because you had a plus two for charisma, if you would put the 13 in your dexterity, you could have put the seven down there and it would have become a nine in your charisma. And that would have given you a 13 for dex. Um, it's not a big deal, but your dex score does um, come into play. My armor um, class. With your armor class, yeah. Right now with a seven, it's technically a minus armor. It's a minus one that you get. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, all right, can I push out my, my charisma to my dexterity? Yeah, was, you want to So what I'll do is you'll get a. This will become a nine down here, That's and fine. then this will be a thirteen to start with. Okay. So, um, which is good. That so which gives a thirteen makes it a plus one, which is a better add to your AC. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think about my well, initiative. I never thought about all my class. So that's so before I add any of the other modifiers, like I said because you're starting at level five for this campaign, we would have already got, you would have gotten an ability boost at four. So looking at your, your um, looking at your scores right now with the strength is a 14, dexterity 13, con 15, intelligence 11, wisdom 17 and charisma nine. You can boost one of these by two or you can choose two of them and make them go up by one. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to put like uh, one point in wisdom and one point in intelligence. Okay. So this will become a 12. And which is excellent. That actually moves you up. And then this one will become an 18, which also moves you up. Um, all right, so now we'll do the modifiers. Uh, this is going to be 14 is going to be a plus two. Uh, dexterity of 13 is going to be a plus one. This is also going to be a plus two. This will be a plus one. This is going to be a plus four. And this one is going to be 10 minus 10, it's going to be a, this one's just a straight zero. So it's not a plus or a negative for charisma right now. Um, all right, excellent. So uh, the, other, the, the other thing that we did, can deal with is your proficiencies. Um, you automatically get proficiencies on wisdom and charisma saving throws. Um, that's as part of your uh, character and between uh, between racial and class, you get a boost to your wisdom and charisma saving throws. Um, and you get an arcana proficiency because you're um, an arcana domain cleric. So you automatically get that. Um, but also you get to choose two skills out of this list. The, you two more skills you want to be proficient, either history, insight, medicine, persuasion, or religion. Um, um, 
History. History, yep. Persuasion. And persuasion. Awesome. Now, the other thing you get is because you're an investigator, you will get another two of these proficiencies for skills. So you can choose two out of insight, investigation, perception. Um, insight and investigation. Okay. There it is. Um, awesome. So that will... I'll, I'll, and what I'll do is before I send them, I'll, I'll do the math and punch in all your modifiers for all your skills and your, your now based off of the scores we've got, um, which will work. Armor class we can now do. Um, you have both a chain shirt and a shield. So the chain shirt's base armor class is 13, um, plus your shield, which is another two, which is 15, plus your dex bonus, which is one. So your starting armor class is going to be 16, which is pretty solid to start. Your initiative is going to be um, plus one based off of your uh, dexterity. Yep. Uh, all right. So the next thing we can do is, oh, I can also come down here and do your attack bonus for your mace. Your attack bonus for your mace is going to be um, your strength, which is two plus your proficiency. So plus five for your attack bonus on your mace. Um, and then you're gonna get a plus two from your strength on your damage. Um, so that'll work. Do you have uh, any kind of range weapons? Did you choose, do you have a crossbow or a bow, short bow or anything? Um, I forgot about that. Oh um, yeah, crossbow. Crossbow, okay. Yeah. Um, so the crossbow, I'll look up damage off, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I'll look it up. Um, but your attack bonus for that is going to be based off your dex. Um, and so that's going to be plus one plus your proficiency. So that's going to be a plus four for that one. Um, perfect. And then I'll punch in the, the extra part of that because um, you are proficient in um, weapons and simple weapons. So light crossbow would be what, what that is. It's a simple weapon. All right. Um, all right, awesome. So the next piece would be our hit points. Okay, so hit you, point. get a, you need a 1d8. Now, I always go by, we're going to have to do it to get you to level five, but I always start level one with max. So like you have a d8, so you would automatically get eight plus your constitution, which is two. So you'd already start level one at, at 10, basically. So you would now we'll roll the d8 for level two. Go to three. All right, so three plus your constitution is two. So that's five, which is going to give us 15. Uh, give me a level three roll. Level three, level three, come on. One. All right, my base rule is I never take ones on hit die rolls okay. because you wait to level up all this time and then you roll like a one for hit points. It's pretty, it's pretty terrible. Like it's pretty, it's pretty depressing. So we roll, so roll again for a one. Six. There it is. Six plus two is eight. Added to that is a 23. So uh, give me a level four roll. Roll the one again. Yep, roll it again. One again. <laughs> Give me another one. Three. There it is. Three plus two is again another five. All right. And then give me a fifth level roll. Fifth level roll. Okay. I think you've got one dice in there that just likes ones because you had a lot of ones we dropped in your abilities too. Yeah, this one is really shite. Okay. All right. Three. All right, so that's going to be, all right, so that makes it 33 total. So you're going to be, you're going to be a 33 to start for hit points. Okay. Um, so that's pretty solid as well. Um, as, well, and as, as plus, plus you're a cleric, so you'll be able to, 
to do some healing and things like that. Um, for spells, let me get down here to your spells. My spells. Now you're a cleric, which is pretty cool because you get to prepare a list every time you take a long rest. So you can change what spells you have every time you take a long rest, which is kind of nice. Um, you do, as an arcane domain cleric, you have a couple spells you always have prepared. They're like freebies, basically. They do cost a slot, but they don't count against how many you prepare. Um, and I put them in here for you already. Um, at level level one spells, you got you have detect magic always prepared, as well as magic missile, because you're our arcane domain, which gives you access to some wizard stuff. So that means that they're always prepared. I know it. They're always prepared. Yeah. So like you're prepared spells um your prepared spells are equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level so your wisdom mod is four plus five so you can prepare nine spells nice. every time you take a long rest um but these six that i've got down here don't count against that nine so basically you've got these six two first two second and two third levels they're all i put little stars next to them so you remember they're always prepared you can prepare nine others, not counting these six. Okay, so the with the, um, the wizard spell, the wizard spells, I don't need to prepare those. It's just my class spell I need to prepare. Right. right. Okay. Yep. Um, so you get detect magic always, magic missile, um, Nystal's magic aura, magic weapon, and then dispel magic and magic circle. Those ones are always. There, you get them as an arcane domain, um, so they're always prepared. Also, at fifth level, you've got four first level spell slots, three second level slots, and two third level slots. Okay. Um, and cantrips, I didn't do anything, but um, because you're an arcane domain cleric, uh, you get two wizard cantrips that you can choose to start with. Yeah, I already got them picked out. Oh, awesome! Which which ones did you choose? Um, presentation. Mei Chan and the light cantrip because I am a scourge as a bar. Light cantrip, yep. And um, mage hand, right? Yes, I also have my uh, first level spell slot prepared. Oh, sure, yeah. Tell me what you're gonna have prepared for first. Okay, um, oh, oh, sorry, one more thing, um, for Claire Con. For cleric cantrip, spare the dying. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, shield of fate. Okay. Yeah. Since uh, my character isn't usually in the group of investigator, he usually um support them out. Okay. Um, cure wounds. He needs to heal himself if you ever in danger come going to come across any of these sorcerers or monsters. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it for my festival. Do you need right. yeah, cool. That sounds great. And then um, I'll punch in your spell save DC and your attack DC, every or your, your spell attack for you. Um, I've put in a number of the features and stuff you've got. Like you have dark vision um, because of being an Asimar. Um, you've got celestial resistance. So you have resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. So you only take half on both of those. Uh, you get healing hands. So as an action, you can touch a creature and cause it to regain hit points equal to your level. Um, you can do that, I think, once a long rest. Um, I've got I've got light bearer. You know the light cantrip, which you chose already, right? Because you're an Asimar. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then and then down here you've got a few. Um, that are your cleric stuff like channel divinity um which you have as well as um uh turn you can turn creatures things like that so i kind of added them all into your additional spots to take a look at okay. uh excellent so let me see moving up i think that kind of has everything um any other questions that you had uh, also, um, you get you've got this you've got a disguise kit. Um, I should do this. You've got a disguise kit and thieves tools, 
because you're proficient in both because you're an investigator you get those yeah um in my language because of my back so it can also be famous in fiends uh yeah fiends yeah okay so that's uh let me think abyssal yeah so, quick, how much yeah. done how much damage does that do um let's see oh cool yeah, the bonus action nice um you can deal let's see Radiant damage equal to half your level, rounded up. So five, half is two points. So basically three points of radiant damage. Um, in addition, once on each turn, you can deal extra radiant damage to one target. The extra damage equals your level. So basically three first, but then you can do damage extra and five, five points extra damage. Oh, okay. Right. Yep. Yep, definitely. Excellent. So yeah. Oh, what's the what alignment were you gonna go with? Oh, um, nothing too crazy. Um, lawful, yep. uh, lawful neutral. Like okay. He probably, yeah, but he probably made some a couple of chaotic good decisions. That's fine. I'll be honest. I'm not like I'm not a crazy stickler to alignment. I basically put it. I use it basically as a starting point. But you know, obviously, everybody kind of sways. I think a little bit depending on decisions that get made. <laughs> Oh. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where I use it just so I kind of know where a character is kind of at for the most part. You know, the only time I'm really like, is that something you do is, you know, if say you're like, you know, lawful good and your character's like, we should kill all the orphans. I'm like, what's your yeah. character do that? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, excellent. Yeah. So I'll fill, I'll fill the rest of this stuff in and then shoot it over to you. Uh, all right, so thanks to Caleb for going through and introducing us to Rowan Ward and doing his ability score rolls and his hit points, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing his Asimar Arcane Cleric in battle. Um, as always, um, I've been DM Steve, and this is Roll Again, and keep playing. <laughs>